Anyway, uh, <laughs> let's get to the live letter that we're here to talk about today. <laughs> uh, yeah, the live letter that happened over the weekend. We actually have a big news to discuss, so... Okay, let's mute the game for a second so we can pull this up. Right, y'all? Yep. Okay, letter from the producer live. What happened in this live letter? I don't know. That's what I'm here to find out. Is there maybe a recap? Are we gonna just scoot through it? I wonder what's the best way to handle this today. Poor Nike, Corn, if you're gonna sit for my butt, <laughs> it's gonna cost you. Oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> Y'all are so funny. I don't need to see- actually, I do want to see the chat. Can y'all see it? <laughs> I'll scoot through, I'll scoot through. Oh, you know what? This probably doesn't have an English translation. I probably need to look for the, the live letter translations from the Discord. Uh, yeah, I'll do that. That's how I would normally do this. Okay. Uh, where are we at? Here it is. Translations and live letters. So what time did this thing start? One in the morning. Oh, let me scroll up quick. Scroll up without seeing anything. I don't want to spoil myself. Let's scroll up. <clears throat> Chat was definitely on fire during that live letter. Yeah, I might move our uh, our chat over a little bit. Okay. Wow, this is a lot. We got a lot to talk about here. What day is it? It's September 30th. Can y'all believe that this year is almost done? 2024, we're in, we're in the last stage of 2024. It's already almost October. Yesterday, I did go out and I got myself a uh, pumpkin spice latte. I did it. And it, it's, it, it just doesn't, it, it doesn't hit the same when it's 33 degrees outside. I mean, in normal measurements. I don't even know. I don't know what it is in Fahrenheit. I forgot how to use Fahrenheit. <laughs> 33 degrees. If you know, you know. Okay. Man, where does this thing start? I hope you... Okay. Nope, that's not it. That's July. 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 Live letter. Yep! Found it. I found it. I found it. No, this is an interview. Damn it. Okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. Yesterday, 12.43 a.m. No way was I going to watch it, like, live. It was way too early. It's past my bedtime. <laughs> okay. So... There is a trailer? Question mark? Let me move y'all's chat. A little bit. Is there a trailer? Just use the Fahrenheit scale on the thermometer. <laughs> the size of the scale. Yeah. Okay, let me move my chat over here. That's good. There's no trailer. It was a spoiler of all Dawn Trail. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh. 
So we're starting. So there should be a Morble walk on stage. Morble says, did you just mispronounce your own name? Well, Yoshpi, you just pointed out this is the last panel, right? I've been on what, half of them? All my introductions have been different for all. I probably don't need to read all this. This is too much. Okay, Yoshpi says, today will be about 7.1. We got a lot of feedback after the release of 7.0, and we hope we can show a bit of what we managed to implement for 7.1 today. Feels lighter without guests. Since today is part one, there won't be any in-game footage. If we had a live demonstration here on stage, that'd be a whole different story. I'm in the middle of checking the patch, so no trailer today. We haven't even started on it yet. Okay. We got patch art and title. Let's see it. Let's see the art. Is, ooh, okay. Who is this? Is that Reen? What? It looks like Reen up there. Am I crazy? No, it can't be. Is it? Is it? Uh, is it? Oh my god, are we gonna go back? The elf girl is from FF11. Well, I haven't played FF11, so I don't know. The cool Jaja. Promising. Whoa, what's going on? Who's this down here? It looks like the cloud of darkness face. Oh man, are we, are we really? Are we going to go back to the first? Okay, well, let's just read what he says. That is hype. Okay. Let's get to that part. That's it. Nice. Man, I would love more Reen content. Let's to go back to the first, please. It is. It's Reen and Gaia fused together into the embodiment of the Oracle of Light and Darkness. Yeah! Oh, wait. Is it because of the ultimate? Right? Isn't it from the ultimate? Okay. Well, let's start at the top. Yes, okay. Yoshi said that's related to the next ultimate. Reen and Gaia. And in the middle, we have that two-headed character that none of us in the dev team thought would become so popular. <laughs> okay, and the name of the patch is Crossroads. Um, as an experienced FF player, you probably already know what date this will be, but we can't confirm. Well... I already did hear uh, that it's going to be middle of November. I saw them post about that. A new screenshot, a few screenshots. So that's, we now have, what, four and a half month, four and a half month patch cycle forever now. I kind of thought that they would not do that after uh, getting their shit back together after the COVID, but it looks like the four and a half uh, patch cycle is here to stay. New main scenario quests. I wonder what's going to be in our new main scenario quest. <laughs> Yoshi P, who can I expect to meet in our new main scenario quest? Let me, I'm not sure. Can you? <laughs> I'm going to put on double speed. Okay, okay. So maybe Graha will be there. Okay, great. Um, oh, let me just go through these pictures that they're showing. Yeah, the baby. I love him. I do love him. Stuff about Zeralja. Mm. We'll see how that goes. Did he have any commentary on this? Oh. No. It looks like a flashback, an echo memory. 
Um, stuff. So maybe that's gonna answer some questions people have had. There's new Allied Society quests from Pelu Pelu. They're crafters, right? I think so. I think it's Crafter Beast Tribe. Looks clearly different in color. Yo, should we ask, should we add pink and green too? <laughs> you have the Pelu Rangers. If you do that. Another picture, Pelu Pelu stuff. This one will be for battle jobs. Oh, I lied. It should be confirmed it's going to be for battle jobs. Although I do think leveling in our game is already pretty easy. Well, that's a relief. Leveling is pretty easy, but honestly, the leveling with the Beast Tribe quest, I'm oh, sorry, Allied Society quest, is probably my most often used way of leveling because it's the most lazy possible way that you can do it. <laughs> you can lock in once a day and get a ton of xp and that's it like it, it's very very little time investment required from you if you don't mind uh, like a daily time investment is very low this that's i have leveled several jobs this way you also don't really have to worry about gear if you do that um like i'm i'm in no rush <laughs> you know <laughs> we're gonna be with this expansion for two years so new custom deliveries uh oh it's just so cute oh it's just cute she's got a little attitude this might not have been the expected npc for new custom deliveries wasn't she on the trolley team <laughs> how else am i gonna level my healers and magical dps for classes you don't actually want to play. Yeah, like, I think there is actually a good reward this time for getting all of your jobs to max level. Uh, so that would be the way to do it. That's the way to make sure you get it done. Oh, yeah. This, these guys were definitely one of the highlights of Dawn Trail main story, in my opinion. Additional role quests. <laughs> <laughs> did y'all finish these old quests did you do these i felt like for me it got off to a rough start <laughs> what the f oh my god let me show you let me show you. i have to show you what people are writing in the what people write it was degenerates that play this game look 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 what's wrong with y'all wrong with you okay yeah i mean that's so that's so bun called for as we said before if you completed all role quests in 7.0 there will be an additional role quest you need to have completed all 7.0 ones right meta quests at the end okay there's the uh, worm stuff sarlacc pit apparently and the meta roll quest at the end. Y'all let me know how that is, because I'm way behind. I'm way behind on that. I still need a level. I'll get to it. With the beast track quest, especially. We did spend quite a bit on this quest, just so you know. Oh, that's interesting. So the cutscenes might be pretty high quality. Did you spend money on voice acting for the quest? I hope so. Do you remember the music at the trolley cutscene? Yes. <laughs> Do you think that they're going to play it again in this main story? I bet they will. I bet they will pull it out again. You got so used to saying Wachimeki Meki. No mistakes anymore. Yeah. It just sounds like what you're making. This quest is sort of a finale for the business district, the uh, Wachimeki quest. Oh, yeah! There's also... Yeah! Hildy! Okay! I love the reaction with Hildy, because anytime people see Hildy stuff, people are all... There's two kinds of people. <laughs> You're either like, yay, more Hildy! Or... Let me show you the reactions, actually, on this. Oh! Shit! Damn it! I clicked a wrong 
thing and it pulled me out of the spot where I was like, oh, I got back to it quick. It's fine. Yeah, let me show you some of these reactions to the people. <laughs> People are either happy or they're like, why? <laughs> you love it or you hate it. You love it or you hate it. I don't know. It's very, it's divisive. But I, in, in general, I like Hildy. I think I like Hildy more as a side thing that you're not, that is totally optional to do and not as something you're required to do for a relic or whatever. We're starting this new side storyline as well. Dawn Trail version of Hildy. Not much yet, just a bit of an introduction. I'm sure you have lots of questions. So one more screenshot. Putting out a bomb. All right, well, we'll see how that goes. 7.1 is sort of a prologue for the Dawn Trail version of Hildy, but it should show the direction we're going. Okay. Everything from the 7.0 main story quest is going to be available as new game plus. Duty support. Um, support for non-main scenario quest dungeons to be implemented. What? What? I mean, you're going to make the game completely solo. Okay. Okay. What else about this? Holotali support will be added in some I don't know. I feel kind of mixed feelings about this. On the one hand, I guess you're future proofing the game. But on the other hand, I feel like this probably takes a ton of resources that might be better spent on current content. I remember them talking about how intent resource intensive duty support is. So I don't know, I've kind of mixed feelings about it. This can make it completely so Hall of the Novice updates. Oh, that's good. What are you going to do? Can you make it Hall of the Intermediate? Thank you, Optimus Prime. I like Hildy more when it was wacky just for fun. Bring it down to earth with explanations for their explosion resistance and hatred for clothes. Kind of ruined it for me. Yeah, I, the, the, it needs to be over the top. It needs to uh, do as much as it can to not take itself seriously. That's really when Hildy is at its best. Um, also, I don't have my... Uh, I don't have my thing on here. One sec. Fosmar87, thank you for the 17 month resub. I do appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Arm Veil Ultimate. <laughs> uh, sub alerts are not off. I did hear that one. Training for specific battle mechanics will be added. What? Okay, that's good. Okay. Is it going to teach you about all the different kinds of markers that there are? That's not bad. I hope that it's intensive. This better be a huge update because there's a buttload of different kinds of markers and combinations of markers. It's like a whole language people have to learn. That's pretty great. That's something we've been asking for. That's good. So, it's probably just going to be stuff like the stack mark. <laughs> we'll see how much they change with it. Uh, we did say main scenario quests would be enough for duty support, but we will slowly be starting to add support of dungeons that aren't required for main story quests too. I think overall it's it's good. My only concern with that is again the resources it might take away from current content, but you know, if you compare Holotali to the current dungeons, it's very different. It might take 10 years. Arm Veil, maybe one day. <laughs> okay. So they're just doing it here and there. 
um, especially overseas, we're often getting the feedback to have something for players that are graduating from the sprout status, learning mechanics, skill rotations, etc. Yes, that is something that we have been very loudly advocating for is helping players bridge the gap from uh, not having to know anything at all and different kinds of content where you are expected to know how to read a lot of different types of mechanics. So hopefully this is gonna be a solution to that problem. He said, we're still debating about rotations because that would be a big cost, but we're starting with training specific for mechanics. Okay. I'm sure everyone has seen a Sprout get this marker for the first time. <laughs> well, they have no idea what to do and run away from the group. And then you see the group chasing the stack. Yeah, but guess what? That's how they learn. <laughs> it's like a rite of passage, okay? <laughs> that's, that's how you learn. You will only make that mistake once. You won't make it again after you did that. <laughs> if you stack these spreads, with the NPC, you will learn the hard way what happens. Yes, true, but you will learn. <laughs> also, um, anyone that hasn't played tank doesn't think too much about the markers we have for tank specific mechanics. All they know is something that's unrelated to me, but it hurts. So we have added this one as well. We start with the easy indicators, but things like look away markers, explanation for towers are in there as well. Every experienced player knows what a tower is, but that's not how we can start to explain those, right? In the end, there will be a graduation exam. Oh! Is there an achievement? Oh my god, can we get people to be like, link your novice <laughs> achievement? <laughs> link novice hall achievement or you're not getting into this race. <laughs> <laughs> We've also prepared tool tips. That's great. Yes. Is <laughs> Proving grounds gold. Yes, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. There will be uh, also, I think this is a great idea. I I'm really happy to see them add this and I hope that they continue to iterate on it over time um, to add more and more complex things. I also would think it would be nice for them to add maybe job specific stuff, uh, but for now, this is a good step in the right direction. That's really great. That is a direct response to some player feedback. PVP update. Extensive update to PvP action execution and hit detection. What? Like what? Ah. PvP job action additions and adjustments. Arena improvements for the Red Sands and Cloud9. Well, honestly, I, I think PvP Crystal of Conflict is pretty good, but it's not something that I can spam all day. I don't mind doing it. I like doing it, uh, but eventually, like, I, it's not something that I could make my main in-game loop. That's kind of how I feel about PvP. I do like Crystal and Conflict. Uh, I personally, I don't like Frontline though. <laughs> I can't stand doing Frontline. I try to avoid it. Um, uh, there will be PVE job balance changes for 7.1 that I won't be going into detail today but we're trying to not nerf anything, especially with ultimate in mind and buff jobs within roles where needed. Oh man, I'm sure that's gonna go really well. Yeah, I'm sure that those changes won't upset anyone. Whoa, okay, wait, wait, let's, before we go there, job balance changes in the next live letter. So part two of the live letter is gonna have the big news. What do y'all think is going to get changed? He said, we made changes to hit detection. A good example are the Machinist LB and Primal Rend on Warrior. A lot of times the animation hasn't even gone off fully yet, but the effect like stuns registered on you. This is changing now. And you can react with shields once you see the animation start. Good. So instances of, but I shielded. Sh healed should be reduced by a lot. That's good. Improving the responsiveness of the game is also something they need to be working on. For every job, we're adding new PvP actions, except for Viper and Picto, since they're absolutely new. 
New PvP actions. Oh, wait, 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 okay. This is going ahead of me where I'm at. Let me just keep this paused right here. My beloved Black Mage is changing a lot. So the play field for some jobs might be very different. Rip. <laughs> okay. I did a good bit of PvP actually as Black Mage. Um, I leveled my Black Mage almost entirely with PvP almost entirely with Crystalline Conflict. So I got to max level and I have no idea how to play Black Mage outside of PvP. <laughs> now I won't know how to play it in PvP either. That's nice. Because <laughs> it's going to change it for PvP too. Uh, okay. <laughs> Great. Hi, Vanilla Wafer. I'm doing really good. This is exciting and fun to look through the live letter news. Um, all the stuff we can expect for, not all the stuff, half the stuff we can expect for 7.1. This is part one of the, uh, information. Part two is going to be the trailer for 7.1 and all the other biggest, most exciting info, but there's still a lot of stuff that we are finding out right now. Um, there will be big updates for Frontline. Okay. Battle content 7.1, the new dungeon, the... Uayawata Field Station. Uayawata. Man, why is everything in Dawn Trail hard to pronounce? Why do they keep naming stuff that is hard to say? Uayawata. Uayawata. You can hear them talking about it. I hear them talking about it. They're like, yeah, well. They're also having fun saying it. Is this in the heritage found area? It looks like it. Okay. Ooh. Oh my god, it looks like a level in perfect dark, doesn't it? <laughs> it's this instant nostalgia I felt. It's in perfect dark. <laughs> it doesn't look like Final Fantasy. <laughs> it's me. Yeah, it's a little creepy. It looks like where you would... It looks like a horror game setting, too. <laughs> what else did he say about this dungeon? It gives you the darkness or lightning element feeling. There's glass there? If we have a wall made of glass and have a 14, usually it breaks. True. <laughs> I'm already done with PD checking this dungeon. The third boss is very engaging. The dungeon bosses have been something lately. The dungeon bosses have been the star of the show in the dungeons. The trash, however, I find it's like, I don't know. They need to think of something interesting to do with the trash because it's really all about the bosses in there right now. Yeah, it does. might make you feel like. Don't do this, guys. What does that mean? <laughs> okay. We will find out what that means. Uh, the Alliance Raid series is probably the most exciting thing uh, from this patch, besides Ultimate, which I currently have no plans to pursue this Ultimate because it's just a time investment and I feel lazy. <laughs> I'm not raiding right now. I'm too lazy. It's a lot of work. You really need to apply yourself in there. But the Lions raid, on the other hand, I will definitely be doing. You should be asking the audience who's played 11. Hey, Buns. Which of y'all played 11? Which one of y'all's played 11? I didn't. So, like, none of this is all fresh to me. I don't recognize any of this stuff. I think that's a good point, Rallium. Honestly, when you queue into old dungeons, sometimes the trash is really fun for they made it so repetitive. Yeah, I think that they have made the trash a little bit too uh, formulate. This is basically a screenshot of FF11's Linza. Ooh. 
It's one of the main hubs. Okay. Well, uh, we will see. <laughs> I hope I can still enjoy it and have fun in it, even if I don't recognize anything. I'm sure I will. I'm sure I will, because usually they put in... Uh, I wonder how lore heavy this is going to be. Like, is this going to be as lore heavy as Ivalis? Yeah, I should be reading chat comments. I've done the first play test with 24 people. We're out to start the internal test runs. Where we try to not have the same staff repeatedly always asking, Have you play tested yet? No? Okay, you're coming. This is in the world of FF14. But we had staff working on this that worked on the FF11 version. Oh wait, we're getting too far ahead. Is this part of the Alliance raid too? Yes, it is. Oh my god, I've been playing so much WoW. <laughs> I'm like, is this our Akara City of Echoes boss? Because <laughs> I actually haven't played FF11. So if it's from if it's from FF11, I don't know what. But that's cool that they found FF11 devs to also work on the FF14 version of the FF11 inspired raid. One more screenshot. As an 11 player, you probably know what character could be found in this area. I don't know. Chat is asking if we're already going for the final boss. I wonder. There have to be multiple alliance raids, right? This is a bit of an announcement for the JP player base. As you know, the names in 11 have been displayed as alphabetical letters, not like 14 in Japanese. Okay. Changing this for 14 would have felt weird. So the names will not be written in Japanese during these alliance raids. Okay. Well, this doesn't apply to us. If you've been playing for a while, you already knew what the 7.1 trial would be. But I don't like this one. Like, what have you guys done with the normal mode even? I'm a healer. I don't like this. Morble said this. What? Okay. Yoshi P asks, which mechanic do you dislike? Marble. I don't even know. Absolute something. It's just wild. Yoshi P. We did debate if it might have been a bit too much. I bet it's not going to be. Come on. Come on. Like, I don't believe this is going to be that bad. <laughs> I think that they were talking about the new trial, uh, actually. I don't believe them after they hyped up uh, End Singer and they were like, this is going to be the hardest boss has ever been, ever. It's going to be so hard. And then it was kind of like normal level of difficulty. <laughs> I don't believe so. We'll see. But so this was probably one of the most enjoyable parts of Dawn Trail for me was fighting this boss. Uh, you know, during the part where I was fighting the boss, that was really good part. Morble says, if you've been playing for a while, you already knew. Yeah, we already read that. Uh, Fiend's Burden. Fiend. Fiend. More pick. Oh, yeah. This is such a good fight. On normal mode, even, it was so much fun. So I'm looking forward. It'll be interesting to see what happens in that extreme. It might be friendlier than normal mode. Horrible as if Yoshi P. Well, one more screenshot. As you can see, we changed places. Where did we even go? I can't trust the bridge on these platforms. No, you cannot. She clearly shows she's shooting lasers from her arms, right? So you have to move platform. But after you move, the bridges must disappear. Might disappear. There'll be pretty rewards at the least, right? <laughs> yes. They will show the rewards in the next live letter. Oh, Unreal. Trial. Nice. Biako. Bounce to level 11. Le Why did I say level 11? Level 100. Because I'm still thinking about FF11. <laughs> I meant to say level 100, but I said 11. That would be pretty crazy. We heard how much y'all love Copper Hell and Sestasha. <laughs> now you also know in which direction the Unreals are going for this expansion. Nice.
but dodging that stuff in the sky. We'll see how people do <laughs> with it. We're adding a new type of battle content. I've been talking about it in a few interviews already. What? What? Chaotic Alliance Raid? Is a new difficulty for Alliance Raid? No. No, they wouldn't. Because of FF11. FF11 being so hard. They make a... Will they make a chaotic hard version? Oh man. What is he saying? Okay, Marble. So 24 people. Well, it's an alliance raid. Is this a 24 man ultimate? Yoshi P. No, that would make everyone retire. <laughs> we wanted to have sort of an extreme feel, but then the developer, Mr. Ozma, said, oopsie, it turned a bit more savage than extreme. Mr. Ozma is the guy who's responsible for top. We have only planned for this one for now, and depending on the feedback, we'll add more in the future. Well, what? It's a 24 man alliance, right? You. Cloud of Darkness. That's why the Cloud of Darkness was in the patch art. Oh, man. Chaotic. Yeah, new version of Difficult is great. Oh, my God. This is what I've been asking for. Wait a minute. Morble said... That's why she... Morble said the same thing I said. It should be said there's no trash... There's, to there's no trash mobs. There's no road to the last boss. What? But... Not sure, but it sounds like it's only the last boss? Uh... Oh. It's only the last boss. It's not actually Alliance Raid. It's just the last boss. That's why it says Cloud of Darkness Chaotic. It doesn't say the name of the raid Chaotic. It's just one boss on the different difficulty. Man. Yes, okay, more will say, what is this? It's just a trial then with more people. Matt, I was I was actually really excited because I thought it was something else than what it is. Yoshi Pete, what do you mean? It's Cloud of Darkness? Oh, it's a picture. Man. I was thinking about something like BA where you storm the castle and go through all the that's what's cool about alliance raid that's why it's neat it's gonna have new mechanics it seems this is me harder vert is a trial this is a trial man i thought when i first heard chaotic alliance raid i thought oh man new difficulty for the new alliance raid because it's gonna be crazy it's gonna be brand new alliance raid and with the extra diff that's what i thought i got myself so excited Clearly enumeration towers. There are unique rewards for this one. I mean, this is just like Unreal. Well, no, not, it's not really like Unreal because it's got new mechanics. More on that in the next live letter. It's a change reward system that does give incentive to repeatedly clear and help out. Okay. Well, that's a good, that sounds good. I don't want to call it savage. I don't think it's quite on the level of a fourth savage floor. Waiting for your feedback on this. Well, I just gave you my feedback. Um, for me, I want different difficulty for the Alliance raid. And this is just a trial. It's kind of, I don't know, kind of... I, I, what I wanted was something different. <laughs> because we have trials. You know, 
we have a ton of bosses that you can just fight by themselves. We have unreal trials as well that you can do. But alliance raid is something different that the game has. That's really cool because we can all go in there together and like run through the trash and run through the bosses. But maybe if there's a really good reward system, it's going to encourage people to do it. But I, I guess I wanted to see something really crazy and new and different that we haven't seen much of. Who is most... Okay, so we'll see what the rewards are like. Because that's a very important part of the puzzle, too. This is for the ultimate raid. Who is most excited for this in 7.1? I'm excited to watch the ultimate raid, actually. I think I will watch people prog it. Yoshi said, I'm always told to take care of my health, especially the mental one. So please, guests and viewers, take care of your health when you challenge this content. <laughs> he just did a reverse Uno. Yeah. He just did a reverse Uno card. Maybe they want to test it just with one boss to see how players get on. Um, maybe, but I feel like they always do this, right? This is something they, they keep keep doing over and over. When they have an idea for something crazy new and innovative that's going to feel really different as a break from their normal type of content, instead of going full force on it and give us, like, really, just do it, they're scared. It always feels like they're scared, and they just dip their toes in it a little bit and do a little experiment to see if people like it or not. I feel like they need to be more bold in their choices. Uh, because they always do these like half measures and just do, they're so worried about making people upset with doing something crazy and different. And you just can't have this attitude. If you're going to try to make something that's truly innovative and is unlike shit that we've already seen before, you need to have faith in what you're doing and, uh, just put it out there and hope people like it. You know, that's really scary. And I understand why they kind of hold, it feels like they hold back a lot of the times. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my take on that. That's my take on that. <clears throat> taking risks means taking that leap of faith and hoping people like your crazy idea. Uh, can you clear ultimates on PF? Oh yeah, people do. It's going to take a lot of additional perseverance and patience from you, but I do know people that do it, and I know, actually know someone who enjoys doing ultimates in PF, but it takes a certain kind of person. Honestly, this was one of my favorite bosses they ever made, so I think this is going to be an extremely fun ultimate, at least I hope so. This is really... Probably some of the best battle content available in the MMO space, I feel. Ultimate fights in FF14. I'm always told to take care of my health. Yeah, we read that already. I love this fight. In Eden. This, there was just, honestly, the Eden raids was banger after banger. So I'm sure the ultimate is going to be even better than those. Delay spell was something we introduced in this raid series. Oh, yeah. We called it spell, spell you later. Spell you later. Actually, it was also Mr. Ozma who came up with that. And it's a good idea. It's a fun mechanic. I'm not sure whether this was one or two weeks after 7.1 release, but it won't be on the same day as 7.1. Well, that makes complete sense. Looking forward to seeing, watching the prog through this. Doman Mahjong update. Yeah, see? Agent Yoda here says, I love PF Ultimates. It's a ton of fun. Yeah, there are people that do it and like doing it. Doman Mahjong update. What's the, what's the Mahjong update? <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh my god, what? Oh my god, I might, I'm gonna pass out. <laughs> oh my god, dude. <laughs> You're adding more voice acting to the game. <laughs> Oh my 
my god, I can't handle this. Um, it's good to hear that you you listen to the fe player feedback about how we needed more voice acting in the game. Uh, so thank you for doing it. <laughs> putting it in Mahjong. <laughs> putting it in Mahjong. <laughs> this is so funny. <laughs> I can't believe this. Look, if this feels like a troll. Like, if I was your GP, this is what I would do to troll the players. Oh, yeah, you want more VA? We got, I got you. I got you. <laughs> barely talked in the main story. We barely heard them say anything. All right. Thank you. Yes, that's good. Can't complain. We did want more VA. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, this is now this season, April Fool's Day. It honestly feels such like a troll. This is so funny. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. That's that's hilarious. I bet the oh my god, I bet there have been so many memes about this. <laughs> okay, he says he says. <laughs> Is that uh, you're buying these with MGP? Wait, what? You buy the voice, the VA with MGP? Yoshi P, I have some voice lines prepared. Morble, they aren't even teasing, but straight up cheering. Some of our VAs are Mahjong experts. Some have no idea what they were recording. So that was pretty fun. I am most scared of Ishtola. Aren't we all? <laughs> <laughs> what do y'all think about this? What do you think about this, chat? <laughs> if Ishtol is cheering me on, I might play Mahjong. There you go. There you go. Maybe it's going to end up being the smartest place they could have added the V. <laughs> Increase engagement in Mahjong. Oh, man. So funny. I laughed so much. <laughs> Okay, housing update. It's not, like, it's not a bad thing that they're adding. It's just funny in considering housing update. Woo? Select interior designs from different residential areas regardless of the location of your plot. That's great because the interior house, yes, the windows and locations of shit and the paint and the the molding and the framing and stuff is going to be different depending on where you are. So this is huge. That's very nice. That's very good. Yeah. Can make it look like you're in Gridania when you're really in Kugane. This is honestly overdue. Good. Exterior will still be limited to the housing district regions. But the interior... Yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool. We also have new interior design. Is this it? Ooh. 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 That's pretty. All right. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it looks a lot better. Um, yeah, that's a huge glow up. That's much more modern and better. Yeah. Good. Really good. Hey! What happened to this? Nice. It's be yes. It's less crunchy. You know what I mean? Pillars gone. Get rid of those damn pillars. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No more pillars. We had housing since 2.1, long time, but we finally made it an interior without pillars. Reforming is very expensive in real life. <laughs> We're giving it to you for free as often as you want. Are you telling me that it is free real estate? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not, I'm not done. I'm not done with that section. Um, what if you already have items placed? We're putting it all in the storage. 
You don't have to do it manually one by one, but you do have to replace them. Oh. Okay. We were also thinking... Once you enter a house, it's basically a different dimension, right? And we give you the interior changes for free. But we were thinking, once you enter an S house, why can't it be large size inside? Oh! What? I don't see any slide about this. Is he going to make it so you can be inside a small house, but it will be large? This is not for 7.1. But in the future, you can select the internal size of your house. What? That's amazing. You can change it as often as you want, but it will cost Gil. That's fantastic. That's a that's gonna make it. Uh, it's gonna make the housing market a little easier to deal with. I think there's just one big problem still with housing, though. Uh, Monet is zero. Thank you for the thirty-eight month resub. I appreciate it. And Vanilla Wafer, thank you for the thirty month resub. Uh, will they make it so you can have more furnishings? No, there's no announcement for that. Oh, but they should. Because if it's large size inside, but you're limited to small size number of furnishings, that could be really sad. <laughs> yeah. It's a step in the right direction despite existing problems. I completely agree. But uh, the issue with the housing right now is having to pay rent, essentially. It's that... You need to keep up your subscription and go into your house on a regular basis or you'll lose the house. This is really restrictive for a lot of people and it drives many people away from engaging with the housing system. And I understand that it's better that housing plots go to people that will more actively use those plots. But at the same time, it's it's just sucks <laughs> that even if you are paying your subscription fee, if you don't go into the house, you can still lose the house. I just hope that they, I hope that they will eventually just give us the damn instance housing. Like, figure it out. They, they need to spend the resources to figure that out. Um, maybe put more functionality into the island sanctuary as a solution. Um, because I, I really think that is what it's going to take. for Make sure everybody has, everybody who pays a subscription fee at any point should have access to housing. This is a feature that everybody should be able to engage with. I really do feel that way. Um, and I wish that they would put time into figuring out how to make that happen. Maybe they are, who knows? Maybe they're already working on that. But this is really huge. I'm really glad to hear this, like changing the uh, interior to be big is a massive, massive W. That's amazing. Especially for FC houses, because those can feel pretty cramped once a bunch of people are in there, you know. But you could only get a small a lot of time. That's great. Okay. Ah. What about apartments? Oh, that's a good question. What about making apartments look like the inside of a house? That would, that's smart. That would be really good. Now we have some miscellaneous announcements. The soundtrack from Dawn Trail. You can pre-order the Primal Concert, September 21st, has happened, but you can watch it on the paid streaming service later. Okay. It would be unfair to players who fought hard to get an L plot. So upgrading the inside will be costly. Nothing on furniture slot increase. Yeah, we'll see how this ends up being implemented. <laughs> okay, there's new official merch. The tabletop role-playing game, which I actually have. I do have it. But I'm busy with other role-playing games at the moment, other tabletops. I, don't, I haven't had time to bust it out. Barely have time to play my ongoing campaign. What's the merch? It's a fan? Keychains, mouse pads, other stuff on the Square Enix store. Okay, great. 
That's it. Wow. That was fast. That's probably the fastest live. I've <laughs> wow, that was really quick. Well, uh, there's good things and there are some things that were kind of. They said, thanks for everyone for coming. It's only part one. So there's going to be part two at a later date. That is the one to look out for. There's still things about graphics updates, details with characters. I made a post about a few of those changes a few days ago. The dev team is working hard to bring you a good 7.1. Please look forward to it. We want to take a few pictures with the people. Okay, well, I don't need to hear that. <laughs> That's great. Um... Okay, so the next live letter, we don't know when that is going to be yet, but that's going to be more hype because the next live letter is going to have the trailer. It's going to have the uh, in-game gameplay footage that Yoshi P will be showing off as he typically does for a part two. And uh, we'll get more of a better idea what to expect in the patch. Clarification, the interior design changes are coming with some point. The size changes are further into the future one to two patches okay so size changes for your house is not gonna happen for well no november mid it's mid-november for the patch so at least four and a half months after that which is middle of march spring next year or even after that one to two patches so that could be if it's not then, it could be August or July or August of 2025. So, uh, yeah, you might be looking forward to it for a while. <laughs> yep. That's a long time. Man, the patch cycle is so long. <laughs> this game. Hi. Uh, yeah, it could be a really long time, but we will see. Yeah, even Guild Wars 2 just added a great instance housing system. I feel like we almost have it, right? We have the Island Sanctuary. We have the ability to put some outdoor furnishings there already. So it felt like we were going that direction. But there's only a couple more things that we would really need to make it a basic, basic, basic instance housing system. So we need Glamour Dresser. We need Armoire. We need ability to put down a, a Crystal Bell and the Retainer Bell. And that is going to be enough for most people. Let me do a small little garden plot there. I would be happy with that, personally. Uh, let me customize that place a little bit more. Let me change the weather. Let me uh, maybe do give people different um, places that they could set up in. Like maybe I want to set up in a cave. Maybe I want to set up by the waterfall. You know, that's what I hope that they put some time into. But I ex I don't think that they would do anything like that until 8.0. Yep. Are you a druid in your D&D campaign? I'm actually right now doing, uh, the, the campaign is not D&D. It is Tales of the Red Dragon Inn, and if there's preset characters. Um, I'm playing the priest, elf priestess character in that. <laughs> it's really fun. It's been really fun. So how do I feel about this overall? Well, the highlights for me is the housing update, but that's making the inside large is not going to happen in some point. That's going to be much later on. So battle, the Battle Alliance, uh, Beast Tribe, I'm just going to call it Beast Tribe, I can't remember, Allied Society, whatever. Battle Beast Tribe is really good. This is a great way to level easily, lazily, and efficiently, efficiently in terms of time investment <laughs> from day to day. I like leveling with those, so that's a really good thing in my opinion. Um, do we know what the mount is going to be from Tully? Because we already have a llama. I was expecting that we would get the llama mount from them, but we already got it. So I'm not sure what, it, maybe a different color llama. <laughs> we can have a blue llama and make Llama Todd happy. Uh, I actually, I have no idea. I don't know what it's going to be. So that's that's really hype. Of course, the Alliance Raid is always exciting. Uh, going through Alliance Raid the first couple of times and hearing the music and uh, having that experience is, is really, really cool. Man, I got so excited thinking we would get another difficulty for Alliance Raid. <laughs> Man. Why would they call it Chaotic Alliance Raid? Why would they call it that? It felt like such a debate. It's not that. It's a boss. It's a one boss. It's a 24-man boss. Okay. I'm not that excited about that. I like the idea of a new difficulty, but I wanted... You gotta, cut... you gotta understand where I'm coming from. My favorite thing that's ever been added in the game is Baldessian Arsenal. <clears throat> a 56-man raid. With... 
reasonably challenging trash and bosses. And there's like little puzzles you have to figure out getting through the whole thing. I think this is just amazing. I wish that they would bring us something like that again. Um, and I just felt like I had almost, it was almost about to happen. <laughs> but then they're like, no, it's just, it's one boss. So I, we'll see what, what people feel about it. Uh, I want that large scale group content. That's something that we have been asking for. Um, apart from that, the ultimate looks obviously incredible. This ultimate is going to be extremely cool to watch, uh, or participate in if you have the time and commitment to do so. Uh, I will definitely be watching my friends progress through it this time. And the Hall of the Novice updates is amazing. This is something that I personally have been campaigning for and asking for for years at this point. So finally seeing some kind of a training school for new players to teach them about different mechanics is, uh, I'm so happy about this actually. This is something, even though I'm not a Sprout, I've always been really, really passionate about the Sprout experience. And uh, so this is great. Uh, this is something that I've asked for and to see them listen and implement it is always a good feeling. Um, that's, that's Hildy, you know, that should be fun. Uh, but that's, it's not, not a whole lot in this live letter. Not much other than what has been covered because obviously there's a lot of things they can't really say when it comes to main story quests. That's all spoilers. So man, I hope the main story is good. <laughs> I hope that it's good. I don't even know what to expect. Uh, well, actually, I do. But, um, <clears throat> yeah. I hope that it's exciting and maybe is it a new direction. The name of the patch is Crossroads. So maybe this is the patch that's going to take us into a new adventure, right? Uh, that, that would be my hope for it. Yeah. Feels like this is just the test. If it's well received and requested, then I bet they expand it to the be closer to the actual alliance raids. I am less optimistic about that. I want to believe that, but at this time I do not. Because I think it's going to take a lot of resources for them. Like, okay, the resources that would need to go into making that new difficulty for an alliance raid is a lot more than what would be required for them to take an existing boss and put slap new mechanics on it and tune it for 24 people. So, <clears throat> I don't know how they go about allocating resources per patch. But I feel like they have a really a limited budget for experimental things. And uh, what about Criterion? Aren't we supposed to be getting more Criterion in this expansion? I thought we were. I thought that was something they were going to keep doing or not. Did he mention anything about it? I don't I don't think he did. Maybe later. I highly doubt they'll ever do this, but I really wish they'd add something like the world treasures and oh my god, I know! <laughs> oh my god, I know. Yeah, uh, like little things you can find and look for in the world, like little treasures and uh, things to do besides fates. I, I think that FF14 could, could improve finding more things besides fates in the open world. There is gathering. I mean, they said before they went to add a large scale thing like BA to the new exploration content. So we're getting that too. Oh yeah, but that's 7.4, 7.5. When can we expect this patches? Uh, 7.4. Well, 7.2 would probably be in July or August of next year. Which means 7.3 would be around New Year's 2026, am I right? And then... Around April 2026, we would get 
7.4, right? With the current four and a half month cycle. So we have a real, we have a long time before uh, we will get the large scale battle content. Criterion is good, but the rewards suck. Yes. We, we have been over that at length. FF14 should do short, short stories for raids, like in WoW, rather than long stories. Well, the way they've approached the stories for Alliance raids has been a little different each year. I mean, each expansion. No mention of the field operations, because if it's coming in 7.4, that's not going to be for until 2026, right? Like, is my math off? <laughs> People are now thinking Criterion will be 7.2 or later. Yeah. <clears throat> Their allocation of resources is bad. They take too long to implement the things that they need to make the game feel fresh. That's the thing that I'm... Uh, that's the thing that I'm concerned about when we approach innovative content as tests and experiments. Maybe that would work better if we had a shorter patch cycle. But because we have such a long patch cycle, I feel like they need to just go full ham. Go ham. Make something big, crazy, and different. And see how people react to that. Because if you just do a little bit, it's not going to last people for uh, the amount of time between the next time that you can iterate on it. You know, you won't get enough information. See what I mean? They spend way too many resources on dungeons and zones. That's the thing. That's why uh, we were talking about the Halitali update. Halitali, you can be able to do with duty support. And I'm thinking, wow, <laughs> like it's it's not a bad thing, but uh, I would rather the resources go to co to current content, giving people more to do between the patches because uh, it's a long time between patches now. Uh, it's a long time. And it's a subscription fee game. That's the other thing. Hmm. Overall, uh, th this is only half of the information that we have. We'll get the other half in, uh, who knows, a couple of weeks, I would assume. Probably around... We usually get it two weeks before the patch comes out. So if we're looking at middle of November for this patch, then maybe start of November, end of October, we'll be looking at uh, part two of this. So yeah, we, we only have half the info for now. Maybe they'll talk about Criterion in part two. Yeah, that's a good point. But I think that they're not gonna put it in this patch. Can always play WoW between patches. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I've, uh, with, with Dawn Trail, this is the first expansion where, um, <clears throat> I'm playing more like how I think a lot of people play. I'm not raiding in FF14. And, uh, so I'm just leveling casually. I, like, when I logged in today, you might have noticed I was in my island sanctuary. That's what I do. <laughs> I'll go to my island and I'll feed my alligators and that's I'll like water plants and stuff and do that once a week. Um and I'm not raiding. I'm not like trying to get the best gear this time. I'm just vibing and like I'm there for a story. Like I'm excited about the story patch and what's gonna happen in the next part of the main story. No matter what, I'm always gonna feel that way. Um <laughs> I wanna see what happens next. Um, but outside of that, yeah, um, I'm just vibing, I'm chilling. I'm fine canceling my sub for a month for the next patch and I'm playing Guild Wars 2 at the moment. It doesn't have enough horizontal content. I wish they had more to collect. Yeah, I think that we still need more to do between patches, especially now that the patch cycle has gotten longer. Because originally it was going to be four months and now it's four and a half which is really, really slow in the modern ecosystem. Yeah, it's really long time. We all thought it was gonna be like that just because of COVID, but then they got used to it being uh, 
for every patch. Forever. Yet. Um, it's just, you really have to... In a subscription game, I do think that you need to give people something to do. Every... Like, something, something cool or exciting should be happening every week, every month. That anybody can take part in. Yep. You don't have F14 for a while? No. Not on stream. Not really. Uh, I don't really play it on stream that much nowadays. But I... Because I'm just waiting for patches. Like, if I'm not raiding, I feel like there's not a lot to stream. <laughs> To be totally honest with you. Like, yep. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you have to think about too. There is a massive number of people who are not done with the story. Um, there's a massive number of people that are just going through the story because the story takes 500 hours. I mean, it takes 400 hours, I think, actually to do it. And that is a gigantic portion of the people that play. And I think that's kind of the people that they cater, cater to the most. Because all those people are going to be busy for a really long time. And there's constantly new people joining that will be busy for a long time. So uh, I, I always wondered if there's a degree of like churn going on. Where... Uh, People at endgame, either they get really involved with raiding or they wait till the next story patch while new players are constantly joining the game and those new players are busy going through the story. So there's always like a general con consistent population number. So in the end, it ends up working out. You know what I mean? It's sustainable that way. <clears throat> I do wish there was more to do between wish there was more to do between patches uh, but <laughs> and the other thing that I want to add he said uh, Nasma says I started playing in 2020 and I still have things to do that I never even tried but I played every day for like three years straight and I've lost momentum the other thing is players need stuff to do that's Exciting and hype and new right now to do right now. Like we're all gonna log in together and do this thing right now because it's the time to do that Yes, there are things that you can find to do in FF14 that you haven't done before There's a million things like that that you can try and people talk about it all the time They'll be like, oh, well, have you tried fishing? It's actually pretty fun. Have you tried gathering? Have you tried doing side quests? There's a there's a limitless number of things that you could probably try that you haven't tried before but when it comes to an MMO and a social Situation Having something that's new, fresh, and exciting that makes everybody want to log in on that day for this thing, that's how social groups maintain a cohesion. Instead of everybody else, whenever they feel like logging in to do whatever they want, nobody's rushed. Nobody, you can log in any day. You can log in today. You can log in two weeks from now. Doesn't matter. Maybe we'll meet up. Maybe we won't. Maybe you'll unsub this month. Maybe you'll sub back next month. Maybe I'll unsub this month and I'll sub back next month. You know, for nobody's like, we're just passing each other. Having that, like, the stuff that's going on in the game that everybody wants to log in to do right now. Oh, we better log in tomorrow because we got blah, 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 blah. Uh, I think it's pretty important for maintaining these social groups. That's what it really comes down to. Because people are playing chill. Like people, are, like I said before, I I'll log in, I'm vibing. I'll do little things that I find I want to do here and there. And that's what a lot of people do. But where's the, like you need the, the hype around something. And I think people are going to not want to hear me say this. <laughs> but I do think that's something World of Warcraft does really well. I've been playing that game a lot uh, since the new expansion came out. And I think it's something that they have learned that is important because, like, for example, for example, it's today is September 30th and a shitload of people I know who haven't even been playing much in the month, they're logging in today 
because the trading post ends today and there's a new trading post that comes up tomorrow. Next week, there's going to be a new time walking event and everybody's going to want to log in to do a time walking event. Every week, there's the vault you need to check. If you did one in dungeon, you have something, you have a present waiting for you in your vault that you can check on reset day. And oh, and there's a new weekly quest that you can do that everybody wants to do because it's good loot. So it makes everybody want to log in every week. Everybody has a reason to fucking log in. You know, when there's events that come back, the events have new shit to farm for and grind for. So everyone's like, well, I did that event before, but I got to do it now because I want that new reward from 2024. These are the kinds of things that even between patches make people want to log in at the same time. And I think that's the missing piece here. Uh, it's risk of FOMO. Maybe it is. Uh, and I hear you, but I do think that some degree of that is not unhealthy for the community. Uh, really. Because you need to feel like there's something exciting going on that you want to do. Right? <laughs> right now, that's how people play together. That's how we all are inspired to play together. I think a little bit <laughs> won't hurt. Yes, there can, there's, a, there's a point when FOMO becomes a huge issue and it's horrible. Um, but I think a little bit is, is healthy. You want to feel like if I don't play, I'll miss out of something cool going on, right? <laughs> that means there's cool stuff going on. It's a, uh, that makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah. Optional content that gives you optional rewards. Yes. Fundamental philosophy is different. But recently, WoW found a good balance between wanting to play and needing to play. Yeah, they have been listening to the feedback on that. That's why I've been playing so much. Um, I don't really feel pressured. But anyway, I, I don't want to go on the whole thing about WoW versus F14. I just wanted to point out that one particular thing that I thought that they do well. I feel like they're fighting for my sub in a lot of different ways. They're constantly giving me, giving me reasons that uh, this month I should sub. Not for next month, not for the month after that, though there's also reasons for that. But right now there's something to do this week. There's always something like that going on. Uh, so, yeah, I guess... The thing is, if you watch this live letter, and you're excited about 7.1, and I, I am, I'm definitely going to be playing the patch on patch day. Or maybe I'll wait a week, so y'all can do the story first. I'm sure I'll be doing some patch content that's not spoilery. And that's that's amazing. But it's still in November. Yo, it's still a month and a half away. <laughs> so people, even that are excited about news happening now, they're not like, oh, I better sub right now. They're thinking, well, I can resub <laughs> in the middle of November. You know, that's that's my concern with the long-term health of, of the game. Yeah. <laughs> I also like taking time off for a while so the treadmill design started to annoy me. And it doesn't really feel so much like a treadmill these days. But we can talk about that when I, when I go to WoW in a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um... I'll have to resub sooner for my house. Yes, the Halloween event is usually the uh, best event that they have. Uh, Halloween is usually pretty banging every year because we get the haunted house and usually there's a pretty good reward for it. We'll see. Uh, when they, they should be announcing that pretty soon. They should be, they, I'm expecting something good because uh, I was not impressed with the Moonfire Fair rewards <laughs> this year. I'm ready to get something really good for Halloween and it better be like a <laughs> better be a mount or something or maybe that year we got a face paint that was pretty good that wasn't too bad yes all saints was it's usually one of the most hype events that we get yes 
I haven't. 5.1 trailer. I don't think I've seen that. Does it for Genshin? No, I don't think I've seen that yet. Yeah. <coughs> huh. Guild Wars 2 event. Is oh, man. Guild Wars. Nobody can beat Guild Wars 2 when it comes to events. Sorry. <laughs> Guild Wars 2 absolutely crushes it with their events. I did the Halloween one. Halloween one in Guild Wars 2 is probably... They probably win the award for best uh, <laughs> seasonal events. <clears throat> yep. What are Guild Wars 2 events like? There's this crazy jumping puzzle. There's, a, there's like a buttload of different things to do. They have like a little instance dungeon you can do. There's uh. I can't even get it. You should just try it. <laughs> yeah. The Halloween is always fun. You'll see. A Halloween guy. What's his name? The Mad King. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. 